and so is globally a benchmark for travel. So let me now invite on stage the country head for Airbnb, who's also responsible for overseeing the operations for the Indian, uh, Indian market. Uh, let me also tell you, he's a young entrepreneur who started at a very young age while he was still at the Delhi University. Uh, and he started a youth-based website uh, he, before joining Airbnb. He also co-founded letsbuy.com, an uh, Indian electronics e-commerce site, which, uh, which was taken over by Flipkart eventually. He's also had stints with Ernst & Young uh, as a consultant, and he's been working with teams all across the globe. So, ladies and gentlemen, a much-awaited session. Please put your hands together for Mr. Amanpreet Bajaj. Very warm welcome to you, sir. Good evening, everyone. Audible? Am I audible? OK, good. Great. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for having me here um, to tell our story uh, that the, the brand has seen over the last few years. Uh, and um, I would like to start with a small story. So my name is Amanpreet Bajaj. Um, I run Airbnb in India. And I love my job. You know, um, and, um, why do I love my job is that I'm super and deeply passionate about one word, which is travel. In fact, in the last one year or so, I've been privileged uh, to have visited at least 20 new cities. And while I visited those places, uh, some for work, some for leisure, I was able to stay in some beautiful Airbnbs across the world. Um, and what I remember the most from those, uh, uh, you know, is not the places that I visited, but the experience that I had. And let me just talk about one such experience. Uh, this is uh, one of my experiences in, in San Francisco. I was there uh, six months back, and this was not the first time I was in San Francisco. Um, my work takes me there, uh, but this time it was very special. I stayed in an Airbnb which was more than 100 years old. It's a Victorian house in a very quiet neighborhood uh, in, in the Noe Valley, which is a valley which is known for not many touristy things. Um, and my host was a guy called Vincent. In fact, he's a super host on Airbnb, which means that He's been providing amazing hospitality for many guests across uh, you know, the world and, and in many years. Uh, Vincent is a medical professional, and hospitality is something that uh, he does on the side. It's also a passion for him. As I said, I had traveled to San Francisco many a times. And every time I would go to the Golden Gate Bridge, do the Pier 39, some of the things that everyone else would have done. But this time, it was very, very different. Winston started talking about his friends in the Silicon Valley. He introduced me to a few people who were very, very interested in, in understanding what's the internet space doing in India. Uh, and so he invited a few friends uh, over for dinner. And we had about four or five people talking about India, the startup economy, the internet age, marketing, uh, the growing millennial, uh, you know, uh, the, is, uh, the growing millennial craze in India, and the fact that big global brands were investing so heavily here. It was one of the best conversations I've ever had, just explaining them more about our country, as well as understanding what they feel about it. In the morning, uh, which would have been a usual American breakfast if I was staying somewhere else, uh, Vincent told me about a great bakery, and he told me a key insight. Go at 6.30 AM, that's when they're baking their bread. And believe me, the entire street was smelling of that beautiful uh, you know, baking process. And in the morning, I had beautiful uh, bread, uh, some deserts, uh, and also, yes, I start my day with a desert, uh, and uh, also some uh, you know, amazing coffee, something that I would have never discovered ever in my life. This was a very, very different travel experience. He also told me about a hidden gem, a very small you know, ice cream factory in San Francisco, which had one of its favorites. And in the evening, I went there and tried it. It was amazing. For the seven times that I'd been to San Francisco, I'd never heard about it. But this time, I was able to discover a hidden gem in the streets of San Francisco. This experience was very different. And, and this is what we will be talking about in more detail today, and how this was much more magical than any other experience that I've had. But let me take you to the beginning, where it all started. This is Nate, Joe, and Brian, the three co-founders of Airbnb. About 10 years ago, uh, in fact, in this picture, they are all seated in a replica of uh, the first ever Airbnb. About three years ago, these three gentlemen were staying in San Francisco. They were budding entrepreneurs. Budding means they were not without a job, so they obviously had some math problems with the money. Uh, but they were budding entrepreneurs, uh, and uh, 
the landlord of their apartment increased their rent by about 50% in one go. So one of these guys had to decide to move out. And it was very, very difficult decision for that person. What happened that week was, two of these folks are designers, one of them is a tech guy. Uh, there was a big design conference happening in San Francisco. And there were many people coming to attend that design conference. And all the hotels in the city were sold out. These guys had an idea. They had a place, this is the real place, the first ever Airbnb which came up there uh, in San Francisco. They said, we have some space here. Why don't we just get people to stay with us? And we will provide them with a bed and with some breakfast. And we would be able to take them and help them see the city around. What happened then was, the problem was they did not have any beds. So Joe, who is one of the co-founders, went and got some air beds out of the closet and inflated them and, gave, and put them in the space. And they put a small website out inviting people that if you are coming to stay for this conference, come and stay with us and we'll also help you with some breakfast, but we'll also help you navigate the city if you are a new person in the city. What happened then? Three people decided to come and join them and buy that particular space on the internet. Um, one of them was a lady from Boston, a man from Utah, and the India Connect started with Airbnb that day. A man from India, a design student called Amol from Mumbai. These three people came and stayed with Brian, Joe, and Nate for that particular weekend. They attended the design conference together, but what they did was far more meaningful. This was the start of the company, the company that was called Air Bed and Breakfast. This was the site that basically the founders put up, basically inviting people to put up their space when there were big events in the city, or letting people to just choose uh, hosts who were you know, putting up their places on this platform to go and stay with them. Today, what started as this particular company is now virtually the largest hospitality company in the whole world. This is our headquarters in San Francisco. There are more than 2,000 people working in this office, working towards one single mission. And that's the mission I will talk about a little later. So let me just explain for people what is Airbnb. So Airbnb is an online platform that lets you book unique homes uh, from local hosts so you can have authentic experiences when you travel. Very simple. The way you would go book a hotel is something if you want to stay in a unique home, you can go and stay with a host or you can rent out an entire place. And you could do this by using any medium that you prefer, whether it's the web, whether it's the mobile web, or you can just download a mobile app on your phones and start browsing even now. So if it is a, a whether it's an apartment for a night, a castle for a week, or a villa for a month, Airbnb connects people to these unique experiences globally. And what has now grown into a large global community across almost every country possible. Talking about you know, growing community, let's talk about our growth. What started in 2009 in some pockets of the United States because of those events coming in, started mushrooming into a large organic community when people started to travel on it and started having great experiences. So as a guest, I stayed with a host, I came back home and I said, wow, I could do this myself, let me put my place again. When more people came and stayed, suddenly, by 2016, and today we have more than four million plus homes on the network across 65,000 cities and more than 191 countries. In India, which is becoming one of the key emerging markets for Airbnb, we have seen almost 200% year-on-year growth across all segments, whether these are homes coming on the platform, whether it's people using Airbnbs to travel within, this, within the country, or Indians traveling abroad. Today, we have more than 25,000 homes uh, across more than 100 cities in India. Overall, on Airbnb, we've had more than 250 million guest arrivals, people who are having amazing experiences, staying with locals in different parts of the world, in different cities, in different neighborhoods. So that brings me to the topic of today, reimagining travel. Let's see how do we travel. Today, you know, what we always see is that if I want to take a vacation or if I'm going to a new place, a lot of my time goes in deciding on where to go and what do I do? I read books, I go read blogs, I would download multiple apps and go through multiple uh, you know, stories that people have had, or I would just go contact a few of my friends and say, help me travel. 
a lot of time today goes into planning of travel. In fact, there are times when planning takes more time than the usual travel itself. And we believe that we need to fix this. We need to make travel both magical as well as easy. But how do we make it magical? So we did a lot of research internally, and we figured out that the magic is in the people. And what we need to do is that when people go travel and interact with more people and immerse themselves in the local culture, that's when the real magic happens. So what we understand is that people are looking for memorable experiences or magical experiences that they would remember for the rest of their lives. But if you look at glossy travel magazines, or if you look at travel agents, or even travel agencies, all of them portray something like this, a near perfect travel experience. Is that the reality? No. Travel today is becoming far more commoditized. It is a templatized way to travel. You are basically doing, you know, just going to a place and not sensing and feeling the place, but just going there and doing things off a checklist that maybe someone else gave to you. Is it something that, that we would want to see you know, travel grow at? We believe that at Airbnb, we want people to start reimagining travel. And when we say reimagining travel, we want more and more people to start going to a place and immersing themselves in that local culture and meeting new people, because that's where the magic happens. In fact, that's where our key brand campaign is based on, where we are urging people that when they travel to a new city, when they're traveling to a new place, they should not just go, you know, city, travel there, or go there. They should go and live there, even if it is just for one night. Let's talk about a bit of the campaign strategy that has followed, uh, you know, basically for this particular narrative that we have. And I'll just talk a little bit. It's a marketing conclave, so I thought I'll just pick up a little bit uh, on, on how we've gone about building this brand in India. If you look at this, building brand Airbnb in India is driven by consideration. Consideration is simple. We want more and more people to start thinking of Airbnb when they're taking a trip either to um, you know, a foreign country or even if it's a weekend getaway um, to, to a city in India. What we believe is that we can build the consideration on three pillars, comprehension, relevance, and brand presence. When we talk about comprehension, it's basically answering one simple question. Do even, people even understand what Airbnb is? What is its value proposition? What is home sharing all about? This is also a new way to travel. When we talk about relevance, we also want to ensure that do people feel Airbnb is the brand for them? Are we resonating with their insights? Is it what they would want to use when they travel abroad or even in India? And most importantly, how's our brand presence in India? Uh, for example, are we top of mind? Do people think about us? Do people talk about us when they're talking about our travel decision? Based on these three pillars, we started our journey in India early last year, and in fact, it gained momentum early this year, and we came with a 360-degree brand campaign, you know, sharing, first talking about the comprehensive part of it. Don't go to Paris. Don't go to LA. Don't go to Tokyo. Live there. Hey, when you Airbnb, you have your own home. Read a book, cook, you know, the stuff you normally do. Wherever you go, don't go there. Live there. Even if it's just for a night. Again, we've laid emphasis on making sure that people understood that there is a new way to travel. It's about going and immersing yourself in the local culture. It's about interacting with the local people. It's about living in their beautiful homes. Um, and, and we believe that that particular promise of ha someone having a local immersive experience can hold true only when they're traveling on Airbnb. And this is what comes to life with our 4 million plus, host four million plus homes that we have on the platform a very vibrant host community that basically is the local expertise who bring them, the travelers, into their local communities and share local insights, or the neighborhoods where the communities are dwelling so that people can immerse themselves in that particular location in a very, very different way. What we did, again, was to start understanding what are the key passion points that basically relate to our particular target audience. Um, and when we looked at those passion points, it's about when people plan to travel in India, what are the key themes that basically make, help them make that decision? So we did some internal research, we did some, we, we, we referred to some external research, and we figured that these four 
uh, passion points were very, very relevant for our team. And, you know, it's, it's not anything of a surprise here. When people are going to a new destination, they think about buying new things from there. When you're going to a new destination, about 47% of the people that we looked at as our target set said they would want to visit something cultural of that place, maybe a monument, maybe some, something that that place is known for, art. Uh, food is something that you cannot take away from travelers. Um, a lot of people that we looked at wanted to immerse themselves in the local cuisine, go try out local food, even look at local ingredients, and also start cooking it uh, if possible. And obviously lifestyle. A lot of people today, especially the Indian millennials, want to travel to attend events. Maybe it's a concert, maybe it's an event, uh, or, or any other thing that resonates well with their lifestyle needs. Understanding these passion points, we said, what do people look up to when they travel? Can we find people who are already brand friends, who are already brand loyalists, who are already Airbnb users, who also embody some of these passion points in their daily livelihood? And we focus on a small influencer strategy in India where we said, let's find people who already love our brand, people who already use us, but who also reflect all of these in their daily life. So we did something. So for example, fashion and shopping. Sonam Kapoor was attending an IFA award in New York. She wanted to extend her trip and stay in New York City to get, um, you know, just to understand the fashion trends there and also bring some bit of her fashion line or her sister's fashion line into that city. She decided to stay in an Airbnb and was able to talk about the entire experience of her staying in the city and also ensuring, uh, also sharing what she did from a fashion perspective in those places. Uh, and she had an amazing experience staying in a loft in New York. Vijay Anusha, who's also someone that people follow a lot in the millennial uh, generation, uh, decided to take a contest winners of Airbnb to unravel the underground fashion scene in Milan. And people were able to look at new design secrets coming out of this. When it came to food, we had Chef Manish Mehrotra, who's known globally for his uh, cuisine and dishes, uh, shared his insights as an avid Airbnb user on some of the best uh, food experiences that he has had when he has traveled abroad and stayed with locals. Or also, you know, some tips of what to cook or what spices to carry when you're staying for longer periods in someone's home and if you want to cook that local food there. We also had Miss Malini travel within Goa, and she went to all the restaurants and the places that her host, Sucheta, uh, decided to share with her. And she also discovered many hidden gems, just like I did in San Francisco. And then lastly, we had Twinkle Khanna, or Milan Soman. Milan was uh, wanting to travel to Norway to see the Northern Lights, just before the Pinkathan in, in India. And he decided to want to immerse in the local culture by staying with the local, and he stayed in Norway. Then Twinkle wanted to reunite with a friend of hers, and they both wanted to relive some parts of their history on the streets of Paris, also discovering cultural and also discovering some highlights of that particular city. All these people, or influencers, the way you call them, embodied those specific passion points, and they wanted to sh share their local stories, share their entire story uh, with more people. And that's where we thought there was a great brand and uh, you know, uh, influencer fit. And we decided to go with these, and this was hugely successful for India. Overall, what we aim to do is to create more brand buzz by ensuring that we are part of the leading conversation across all the cultural points. So whether it was Brian Chesky, our CEO, coming to India and launching experiences earlier this year with Shantanu and Nikhil, who are ace fashion designers. In fact, there is an experience on the platform which you can also book now and spend an entire day with Shantanu and Nikhil understanding uh, the art of couture from them. Basically from sketching um, how does a garment go from the workshop to the ramp uh, of Paris. Uh, we also wanted to reimagine domestic travel. We wanted people to not start looking at destinations with a different lens. So earlier this month, we launched something what we call the Live There Guide in Goa. This is basically a 32-page booklet which has curated homes uh, by Gauri Khan, who is a celebrated interior designer. Uh, we also spoke to a number of influencers in Goa, people who call Goa home, or people who are hugely inspired by Goa um, in their work streams to share their hidden points across multiple fashion, fashion points uh, that people you know, think of when traveling to Goa. And that 32-page booklet, booklet is the culmination of all of that. We launched this earlier this year, and we are already seeing some great traction. And lastly, talking about Gauri Khan, we had Shah Rukh and Gauri, after having a great Airbnb experience, wanting to do this when they were traveling to LA. They decided to stay in, a, in an uh, Airbnb for 10 days only with, with their entire family. 
and Shah Rukh went on to Twitter to thank Airbnb for a great experience. The idea for us was to get into the key popular conversations across key cultural points in India, whether it's lifestyle, whether it's fashion, whether it's Bollywood, or whether it's just door play, a new lens towards looking at travel. But Airbnb is not just about guests, it's also about hosts. In fact, if you look at India, hospitality is intrinsic to our culture. We've been brought up by the saying in Sanskrit, which says, Atiti Devo Bhava. And we have always welcomed friends or friends of relatives or relatives of friends into our homes for many years. So not only does Airbnb help you live like a local when you're traveling, but it also gives you a great opportunity to be a micro entrepreneur, earn some extra income, but also showcase the beautiful culture of your country. And when we started thinking about what is, uh, when it comes to the biggest cultural moment for India, what, what bigger moment than a big festival? So this Diwali, we wanted to showcase the joy of living in an Airbnb by focusing more on the host and the guest relationship, especially when someone is coming to our country and wanting to immerse in the vibrant, beautiful culture that we have, especially during the festivities. So we looked at Diwali as a key moment, and we launched a campaign for Diwali this year. Masala chai, it has some cardamom and ginger in it. I taste the ginger, it's really good. <laughs> I'll show you what the markets look like on the day of Diwali. I'd love to have you celebrate with us. You got it! Yeah! I see a lot of flowers from sweets being sold. festival of light. Get rid of all the darkness in our lives. We would use these diyas mm -hmm. to celebrate the victory of good over evil. Said basically kind of was a summation for everything that I talked about today. People traveling, staying with locals, immersing themselves in the local culture, becoming a part of that particular family, and enjoying a place in a very different way. In fact, you know, I talked about a company's mission a little while back, but I'll, I'll, I'll detail that out now. People talk about technology, you know, taking away jobs, AI taking away job functions or that having a large impact on the way we do business here. We believe till the time people, and, uh, people are connecting with each other, or what we see where magic happens, in fact, Airbnb has pioneered the art of people-powered hospitality. Till the time people are interacting with each other, you know, we cannot be impacted by anything. Magic would always happen at that particular point of time. And our company's mission is that we want to create a world where everyone can belong anywhere, irrespective of who they are, where they come from, or what do they do. And that mission drives our work forward across the world as well as in India. Thank you. We have some time to take some questions. Sure. So, okay, we have a question that side. Do we have a mic that side? Can you get the mic, please? So how do you recruit these uh, hosts? Uh, how do you identify them? Is there an ecosystem? What about the security and safety of the guests, etc.? So and what is, how does the revenue flow? Uh, 
there's a company, I'm sure the company gets some part of it. And sure, I'll, I'll explain that in detail. First of all, to your first point, trust and safety is critical to what we do. Uh, in fact, uh, what we believe is that there should be no strangers on the platform. So what we have done is we have created multiple tools that are available for hosts and guests across the world, as well as in India, which basically talks about verified profiles. So when you log on to the uh, portal and you register as a user, you have to upload a government issued ID. Based on certain details that you share, you go through a verification process. And once that is done, you start becoming a host or an active host on the platform. Um, we have also built in multiple trust related tools. For example, we verify phone numbers, email, social profiles, all of that is linked on the profile. But what is core to our system or any marketplace is the review mechanism. So what happens is when a guest stays with the host and the host hosts a particular guest, they both have to review each other after the end of the uh, stay. And people can see those reviews on the platform. It is compulsory. You review the guest, the, the host reviews you. And over a period of time, what we see is that people build a reputation online. And what we do see is we, using machine learning and other technologies, we make sure that we are looking at each and every review. And if there is a certain promise of hospitality which is wavering down, or people are saying this is not what, what I expected, uh, we start looking at corrective actions onto that host to an extreme that we may also take that host off the platform. Uh, all these tools bring in a lot of trust uh, across the system. We also ensure that there is a robust payment system so we keep the money with as Airbnb, and only once the, the guest is satisfied with the services that we pass the money on to the host. So the guest can live with the uh, satisfaction that if something were to go wrong or if the promise was not delivered of the hospitality that was offered, I can get my money back. And the same way, the host also has to deliver on that promise because, as I said, if they do not demonstrate the hospitality that they're promising, we can take them off the platform. In fact, we also have a system to reward our best performing hosts by something called a super host status. So people who exhibit great hospitality, stay after stay, get a new status called super host. In fact, Vincent, uh, the host that I stayed with in, in San Francisco, was a super host. And you can uh, choose to stay with a super host on the platform. Uh, apart from that, we also provide what we call as the host guarantee, which is 6.6 uh, .6 crore rupee insurance for all hosts that are on the platform. So in case something were to go wrong to your property if you're a host. And things can happen. There could be families staying in the apartment, and if you know something breaks, that insurance policy covers it. So it gives the peace of mind to the host as well. Apart from that, we have a 24 by 7 trust and safety and call center team available at any corner of the world in any time zone for any assistance that you would want to have. In fact, that's the reason more than 250 million people have you know, stayed on Airbnbs across the world and had fair and positive experiences. Uh, uh, talking about revenue, yes, we have a very uh, transparent commission system. When you become a host on the platform and you want to put your home, uh, you will get 97% of whatever you charge or your room at. So the flexibility of pricing is totally yours. We take a 3% cut on the host commission for all the facilities that I talked about that we provide. Plus what we also do is when the guest is booking, we take a small percentage of commission from the guest as a service facilitation fee, which is basically, uh, which could vary between uh, anywhere between five to 10%, depending on the length of stay, the place of stay, and the kind of home. I hope that answers your question. All right, thank you. I think uh, we will have to, in the interest of time, we'll have to actually stop the question answers, uh, but I'm sure uh, Mr. Bajaj is here. Thank you, let's give thank him a round of applause. And let me also invite Ms. Deepa Bhatia, strategy consultant to Pitara TV to kindly join us on stage to hand over a small memento uh, to Mr. Bajaj. Thank you very much, sir, once again. At this moment, uh, we put a round of applause one more time, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Uh, just